Alright, in this tutorial I want to cover arrays. Arrays are simply bunches of data compacted into one variable. Alright, and to explain that in very, very simply, imagine I had to have 100 different variables like local 1 equals 1 and then local 2 equals 2 and then I keep doing that 100 times and I have to have local 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 eventually that's going to get obnoxious and really repetitive and it's very annoying so to combat that we have arrays array is simply like this I can go array equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I can do that for a hundred times and see how much easier and nicer that looks. Okay? Now, if I wanted to access anything in that array, I'd go message box underscore p array. Now do a square bracket. Zero. And what that's going to do is computers count arrays uh, the, the start of an array as an index of zero so basically if I wanted to access number one here I'd have to type in array square bracket zero and square bracket right I wanted to access number if I want to access the second element this one number two I'd have to put in array one array two array three array four five six seven eight nine because of the way computers count it which is why you'll see zero in the other people's scripts they might be going what the hell is this okay so we'll mix this up a little bit and I'm gonna go 10 for this one and then I'll go 200 24 57 I'm just doing random numbers here uh, 20 14 um, 72 and then 100 Okay, so I can go mispronounce underscore p array one, All right? And I'm just just gonna go nine, five, and then seven. And we'll just print, it'll just print out what we wanted. I'm gonna get rid of vgm underscore vgm dot play because I'll throw me now. Ten, one hundred, sixty-nine, fourteen, true false. And true false is obviously from our previous tutorials over here okay and that's how you can make an array and it can be as big as you want it to be so if I wanted to actually have a 100 in here I can just keep going comma number comma number comma number and it can be multi-line so I can space it out a little bit and I can put it down here too and then still comma add number comma add number keep going keep doing it until I don't want it anymore Right. If I don't want any more, I just put it in the square bracket. That's it. That's the end of the array. And now, however, whatever size it is, you can access it. So I have no idea what size that is. Okay. But here's the cool thing about arrays. In Ruby, an array is an object. So if I wanted to know how big an array is, I can go array dot size. So if I print it out to a message box, since I have no idea what size that is and I don't care to count it. 18. Okay, so that means if I want to access the last element in this array, which is 20, I type in array 17. Because remember, if it's 18 in size, that means last the last thing here is array 17. Okay. Now here's the cool thing about uh, arrays in Ruby. But before we do that, I thought I'd go and look into uh, arrays in another language. Just to, just to show you what the differences are. And here's one of them. In C++ here, if you want to make an array, you have to specify the size for one thing. So I can specify size 4, and then equals, and uh, it's a little different C++, so I can go 1, 4, 7, 3. Okay? And as you can see, the, the computer is happy with this. Okay? So now I can go, now if I go in here and I type in a string, what's it doing? Bam, error. Right? Because in C++, 
you are limited to whatever you, you specify the array is going to be, which here I've specified it's going to be an integer, which as we know, integer is a whole number. So if I try to put it into a string, if I try to put a string into the uh, the array, it automatically says, I can't do that, buddy. All right? And, I can, and if I do the exact same for string, array four, and I try to put in an integer or a float into here, it's going to tell me nope. Okay, see, cannot convert into string. Same for float. All right, and that's in C plus plus. Now back to our normal language, Ruby. The cool thing about Ruby is I can actually spec I can actually put in any type of variable that I want into the array. So at the moment I've just got whole numbers here, right? But I can have floats too if I want. And I can have strings. Text. And it's just it's perfectly fine with it. It doesn't throw me any errors, doesn't tell me off or anything, it's happy with it. I can put in true here if I want. False. Uh Pokemon. Spell it right. Pokemon. Damn it. That Pokemon. And uh how about two hundred? Okay, and now I read out size. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So we can access it now. Go to that first element. One. Then we get four, and then we can get six, which is the last one. Remember? Oh, put a dot there. Nope. Comma. Has to be a comma. Okay. And then I'll put in three. And now we get ten. False. 200 true all right and next that's, that's how you can make an array in Ruby it's f it's very simple okay but that's just the declaration of the array let's say I want to add more onto this at the end of it see I don't really know how big I want the array to be so right now I've just specified yeah I want you to create this in the array but what if I want to add more well I can do this array square bracket array dot size which as you saw down here it gives you the array size in the message box so if I put that same thing here for the array it's going to return the size of it and since array counts this as 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 when this one gets uh, uh, 7 from it I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. When this array dot size returns seven to here, it's going to say, okay, array, you know, seventh element, which does not exist, so it's question mark at the moment. Equals text. And what that's gonna do is it's going to go to the end of it, because array dot size, the last element, and then it's going to change it to text and then it's going to add on text to it. So now I can go be a array dot size. So here. Okay. And then I can do this at the bottom. Below it. And then I can print out the size of it again. And get rid of all the other other message boxes and I just deleted it, didn't I? Yes I did. Alright, check it out check it out. Seven, eight. All right. And by doing that, I can also change a, sp a sp specific element right here. So zero, one, two, three, four. So let's change four here. All right. We can go array four. All right. We'll print out array four, and now we can go array dot size. Change that to four, and we can change that to. I've been changed. All right, and then we can go array four here, just to prove that it has been changed. False. I've been changed. Amazing. And that is pretty much how you make arrays in Ruby. It's very, very easy. In fact, you don't have to do anything at the start of the array either. I could just do that. All right. It would throw me an error for these because it what's four? It doesn't know what four is. So if I play it now, it will give me an error.
or nil. Alright. Don't worry if you don't know what nil is. I'll cover that someday. Or well, probably soon, really. So now I can do the exact same as before on go array. Array dot size equals something. And I can do really anything like 100, a float, a boolean, whatever. And I can do that as many times as I want. Nope, not V. Okay. And then I can message box underscore P however many I just put into it. Nope. Dot size. And before we do the final one, let's do the first one. Okay. Ooh, what was that? Oh, okay. I need a bracket there. Try again. Zero. Fourteen. Which means I just added fourteen things into the array. Alright. It's so fairly simple stuff. Keep in mind, because it will help you. You will use arrays a lot when programming, because you really don't want to have to be creating local variables 100 times when you can just do it once and get the same effect. Alright? So have fun with that.